ये हाय आई एम शशांक फ्रॉम रेजर पे वी कैप्चर्स बिलियंस ऑफ इवेंट्स ईच डे एंड वी हैव लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम्स टू सॉल्व यूजिंग डेटा एंड एआई सो वन ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम आई वांट टू डिस्कस हियर दैट्स वी डिटेक्ट्स एंड प्रिवेंट्स द फ्रॉड इन डिजिटल एंड ई-कॉमर्स ट्रांजैक्शंस सो एज एवरीबॉडी नोस वेयर इज द मनी देयर इज द फ्रॉड सो एज द पेमेंट गेटवे एंड एज ए पेमेंट सर्विस प्रोवाइडर वी हैव टू प्रिवेंट द लॉसेस ऑफ आवर मर्चेंट्स so uh, we we have different products uh, and uh, different different problems to solve so uh, one is that uh, fraud prevention in e-commerce transactions so how we does that and what we does that so we captures 200 plus parameters from the e-commerce websites and applications using plugins sdks and uh, rest apis so once we have that we move that into kafka and then we have apache flink so where we uh, Where, where we generate 300 to 400 features out of that so uh, features like uh, user behavior feature how many transactions he have done in past or past week past month these type of features and uh, locations feature location is five star location or four star location same with the ip and the phone and uh, user journey how many events he have clicked on that and what's the journey and end of the transactions uh, within 200 300 milliseconds we predict whether this is like a fraudulent transaction or genuine transaction so main thing is like uh, how you run your ai models on the scale in real time and how you train that in in that in that period only because uh, you have to do incremental learning and because uh, whenever fraudulent are fraudulent users are doing to uh, uh, trying to play with the system or uh, try to do some frauds they will do that within some small time frame maybe in one minute five minutes or half an hour so your model should be up to date to that so we use incremental learning algorithms there and uh, um, that feature generation for in the feature generation and uh, prediction of model we does that in 200 milliseconds so uh, for that for that uh, currently we are deploying our model in flink application itself and uh, once we predict that uh, model Uh, predict the class whether it's like fraudulent or genuine with the probability score we send that to our customer using post packs and real time dashboards where we can they can decide uh, whether to process that transaction or not so this is the use case we augment lot of uh, third party data also on that like uh, uh, on city we does that uh, what, what's the uh, it's tier 3 city or tier 2 city or tier 1 city what's the population of the city what's the try to achieve that okay, what's the paying capability of the user is there any anomalies uh, in the transactions or merchant transaction these things we does that so this this how okay uh, questions questions for him real time fraud detection big topic anomaly detection a big topic yeah we've got one here one now just this The flash talk speakers are helping each other out. So let's go for it. Hey, uh, thanks. I think that's, that's a great topic that you spoke about. Yeah. Uh, so whenever we do fraud detection or anomaly detection, yeah. uh, I think one of the problems in the security field is whether you're doing the detection at a transaction level or yeah. at a user level, yeah. and how are you actually achieving that? Because some of the projects or research that I did spoke about when they when you're doing uh, the detection at the user level they recommend that you use different model for different users so how are you how did you go about solving the problem especially at scale where you have a lot of users can you just explain briefly on that so actually we solve that problem at transaction level not uh, user level user level we take it as a uh, you can say some features in our model uh, so as you as you are saying uh, yeah this is the problem because in transaction time you you only get some milliseconds to predict that and uh, you have to take in account uh, all the user history what he have done in the past and uh, what other users are doing in similar like like if you have to do clustering and these things so uh, in our case so so for an example in e-commerce frauds what happens so e-commerce frauds is not generally some geography specific or user specific it change so if you are in north region then there are different type of frauds if you are in south region there are different type of frauds if you are selling some fashion product there is different type of fraud if you are selling some electronics products you there different type of fraud so we create some micro models some address models some user models uh, some geography models and uh, by assembling them then we generate the results okay great one last question from hussein yeah uh, i think uh, it's just a 
follow up of his question like yeah. uh, i just wanted to know like how complex is the model and uh, like what are the scale problems that you faced yeah so uh, currently we are using two type of models one is classification model as we have the label data because um, we know that if what happened to that transaction in past or what happened to that order in past so if we have that like uh, one year or two years of that transactions and uh, with the label so we use classification models on that and uh, we have an lstm models also so in lstm we we generally draw something like it ki, uh, user when user opens the website when he he have done first event when he have added something to the cart so this type of journey we uh, we we train lstm models with that with features and with uh, time is spent on each event so then after four or five events we can predict whether this will be like fraudulent transaction or genuine transaction by using user behavior so user behavior model and classification models usually. okay well huge round of applause for shashank thank you from razorpay